So we're here at the corner. Uh, so you can see the, the mobile home park right there. And we're gonna be talking about the, this tide gate right here. Again, the tide you can see is about, it's about halfway up the, halfway up the, um... oh, interesting. So if we listen here, if you guys listen, you can hear water flowing. So that's telling us the seal isn't working, isn't super, super tight. It sounds like water is, is coming from here flooding, so that's something that needs to be fixed and needs to be attended to. Okay, so here we go. I know, dangerous. Okay, let's try this like this. Okay, so hopefully you guys can uh, you guys can see this. So can you guys see this thing down here? If not, you guys can walk over real quick, socially distance, and just take a quick look at it and then go back. So this is one of the key aspects of the restoration. So this is a, a, a tide gate or a flood gate. This is a one-way valve. Now, what was going on before, we have all these culverts, right, taking all that urban drool uh, from, the, from the houses and from the, the streets, put, dump it in the marsh, right? So how we typically historically did that was we just had a tube, right? We just had a, 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 a hole, a, a straw. So when it rained out there, the straw left, right? But as we talked about before, as, the, as sea level rise was rising, as we started having the hydrological constraints and the water wasn't easily moved in and out, water would be trapped here. Uh, and also the, the lowest part of the mobile home park was lower than this area, okay? Again, you guys are on a slight berm. You guys are on a slight embankment, uh, you know, relative to the marsh plain, right? They're much, much closer to actually the marsh plain elevation itself. So when we would get a lot of rainwater or a lot of storm water or whatever, and this water level in this channel would go up, it would go through the, the tube, it would go through the straw and, 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 you know, and backwash basically, right? And go in and inundate those folks. So one of the things was to put in, there's actually two, there's one here, which you can't, that's ah, wet. That's not, it's one over here that you can't see, a smaller one that's taking water from another section of the town. And then this, which is taking water from over here. So if you come look, or when, when I pause, you guys can come out and look, it, it's a flap gate, okay? So it it's, should be well lubricated. You should have a tight seal. When you walk over here, I'm listening right now. Can you guys hear that? So that shouldn't really be happening, right? So right now the water is about uh, halfway, actually it looks a little bit more like 60, 75% high up, up, the, up the circle, right? Up the thing. And so I think what's going on is there's a little bit of leakage around that, around that, that uh, um, seal. And so water I think is pouring in from the channel into, into this, this guy, right? So that's not ideal. We probably need to fix that, right? But in general, what's happening is rains here, lots of water, flows out, it kicks open, right? It's loose. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on it right now, so I can't lift it up. But if there was no water in here, I could climb down here and, and just, you know, with my hand, just open it up. So the idea is water flowing out, boom, good. Water come away from the city. High tide, rainwater, it backs up and it seals it off and either doesn't allow any water in or there might be a little trickle like right now, but it, it, it controls most of the water. So that's gonna mean all these properties don't flood anymore. All these properties are worth more. All these homeowners can actually enjoy the marsh more. And instead of seeing the marsh as a threat or the wetland as a danger, we can see it as a beautiful thing. And now these folks is home. And also I would, I would argue to you, and this happens in all of our successful restorations, the home value, the property value around goes way up, right? This is both in terms of a natural restoration, but also we see things like San Antonio Riverwalk and, and these different you know, restorations of waterfronts and things of that nature as we, the effort we're working on now to try to restore the LA River in Los Angeles, right? As we add, reintroduce ecological functioning and more natural systems, invariably the value goes up. People wanna meander, people wanna have a beer, people wanna go on a bike ride with their significant other, all that kind of stuff, as opposed to a smelly, stinky, degraded area that's all concrete and 
dangerous and dark at night and people don't know if it's safe, right? So there's, there's all kinds of benefits that we get from a healthy system, not just the ecological functioning, but we get a lot of social good as well. And not just sort of theoretical social good, but very uh, uh, readily measured, very easily quantified social good. And so, so we just, so we just were walking here, saw an old guy running, right? We saw a guy with his baby, the mom with her kids, right? That's a, that's a value as well, right? That's building community. That's worth doing in and of itself. And so as we can layer these things on, as we can layer on the hydrological improvement, lack of flooding, while also improving the hydrology in the salt marsh, uh, passive recreational area, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, all of this builds and adds together. And these historically were thought of very separate things. Increasingly with restoration, we see these things are all related. If we don't have mom and the kids walking here, if we don't have the old retired guy jogging here, when it comes time to vote, should we keep funding this? Should we keep supporting this? The community is going to be much less likely to support it. Why the hell should I support it? That's a lame place. That's an ugly place. If it's a place where they take their grandkids, if it's a place they go on a date with their significant other, if it's a place they, place they chill out after they go surfing, you know, whatever, that translates to worth, that translates to support, that translates to buy-in, and therefore more likely to sustain the system on the long term when we need help and engagement and stuff like that. Just like we talked about when I talked about the foothills, about the families doing the plantings, right? The tree plantings, it gets buy-in, you get, you get people connected to the system. Um, so, okay, so this is, this is a tidal creek. This is, this is uh, 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 was, so there was, this, this creek did exist here, but there, there was a structure here, but this was all completely redone in the Ash Avenue restoration. So this, this, this structure was all new. Cool? Yeah. No, 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 sorry. No, this is just a title. This is just an Ash Avenue title creek. Franklin is on the other side of that thing. So Franklin is constrained to that chin, constrained between those two levees over there. We can't quite see yet. Cool. Other questions? Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. If you guys haven't seen this, come over, take a stare. This is definitely worth a photograph for your report. Um, take a stare and just sort of Make sure you understand what I'm talking about here in terms of this uh, one-way tidal, tidal valve or, or uh, a tide gate.